This Pitch Breakfast video is brought to you by Spangler and Agins, attorneys for Charlotte's startup community. Good morning, everyone. My name is David Huin, and I am the CEO of Equity. Right now, nearly one out of every two students is dropping out of college, with the number one reason being financial pressure, and a new student goes into default every 29 seconds. College is directly setting millions of our students up for financial failure, and this is a problem for the institutions that are responsible for them. At a time when the, the national conversation is shifting from access to completion, high schools now need to rethink how they're spending their annual $2.3 billion in college guidance supports per year. At the same time, colleges are losing nearly $5 billion a year in lost tuition revenue from financially induced dropout alone. We think it is time to stop the bleeding, and to that end, we've introduced equity the first of its kind college financial planning app for high school and college students, supporting students through each and every financial decision on their long road to college graduation. Equity does this by first helping high school students understand both the short and long-term financial implications of upfront choice, put together a granular financial plan for college success to preempt and avoid the financial pressures that induce dropout, and ultimately, to support them through real-time money management when they're on their college campus. We sell equity on a per-student license to high schools and colleges. Leveraging student spending data, we also provide colleges insight into students' various levels of financial retention risk, which we also sell on a per-student basis. We've already begun to generate revenue, having launched last month in a number of paid pilots with 700 students. And in addition to the Queen City FinTech program, we have received support, uh, support from the Points of Light Civic Accelerator, 1776, and we've begun conversations with Pearson, the largest global education company, about a distribution partnership. We've raised 250K to date, but we're now looking to raise a 750K seed round so that we can grow our product and uh, sales teams and more aggressively go to market. Thank you so much for uh, being here with us and appreciate you uh, taking the time to listen. Yep. Yeah, want, I, I, want, I can project. You want to Hello? There you go. I think it works. Um, <clears throat> good job, David. I, I heard that you won't even uh, practicing your pitch or working on this for uh, only a few days. So, great job. Thank you. Um, but I was left understanding, I think, your, the problem that you're addressing. Uh, and, and I think I have a decent sense for your solution. I don't really um, have a good sense for your business. And, and I mean, that would be my, my summary feedback to you and my question to you also. Um, what, what is your business about and how do you make money? Sure, so it's this SAS loan. Um, so we're selling a software platform to high schools and colleges. Uh, at the high school level, it's $15 per student per year. The implementation is based uh, in two forms. So every school is a snowflake. So some schools have more capacity than others to deliver sort of curricular-based programming or guidance based programming. Uh, we, right now, are implementing programs both through the college guidance function. We also have a curriculum that can supplement the platform that will also allow us entry into schools. So uh, you know, in the various pilots we're, we're doing right now, we offer the platform to college guidance counselors. We provide a little bit of PD. And then students are using that platform in conjunction with their guidance, uh, college guidance counselors. At the, high, at the college level, uh, at the universities where students aren't already on our platform, we can sell equity uh, again on a per student license. As students are using the budgeting app, we're gathering data about how they're spending and are able to identify uh, if they are trending toward financial risk. Colleges and universities right now are paying as much as $1,000 per student for retention software. So there was a 50-page report that came out the other day about sort of the retention software landscape. There was not one word about financial risk, uh, despite the fact that this is the number one reason that students drop out. The reason for that is because these players are not able to generate any insight into student spending. Game. So as students are spending with our, our, uh, with their, our budgeting app, as we can track what their uh, financial behavior is, we can get a sense of which and when students are trending toward financial risk and help universities take uh, action to preempt that. So, so, yeah, I, I guess um, it, it seems to make sense, but, but it's almost too logical. And, 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 uh, and, and I think you're missing a little bit of the, the, the spice that you're going to need to convince 
Uh, both investors is probably my guess is as well as users. Um, so so I, I think you need to step back a little, and this is just my advice, but just one person, right? Sure. And you probably should listen to a lot of other people's advice. Um, before you do anything, you seem to understand the, this really well, but <clears throat> my issue is when, when you hear a pitch from an entrepreneur who knows their business well, you're looking for that special uh, something that is going to make him come out of the, 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 the crowd. And I, I'm not hearing it from you yet. I think you have it, but you just need to look, instead of, instead of telling me your story, I think you need to look for what I wanna hear in your story. You see what I mean? Um, and, and, and that to me is, how are you gonna be really special and different in terms of both making money and also convincing students who problem, my guess is, is not that they don't know that, that they need to be better informed, is that how do you get them to actually use the knowledge or seek that knowledge in the first place? Sure, so, um, do you mind if I respond? Or? Please. Okay, so my personal background is I actually used to run a not-for-profit college access organization. So I was providing financial education for students focused around college planning, right? The problem that I saw in that capacity was there was no actionable resource, right? So to your point, providing education for students isn't enough. You need to supply them with some sort of actionable resource to actually go through this process and support them from start to finish. Um, so, you know, students are now actually able to, in real time, use the platform to make decisions and also uh, track their sort of, you know, their behavior as they're going through it, which is a big departure from what we were previously doing in sort of an education-based model. The other thing is, um, you know, this is a PFM at the college level, right? We're gonna be putting together a curated deals network. What's, what's that acronym that doesn't I apologize. Mean? Sorry, a personal financial <coughs> Um So, you know, And are students looking for this? I mean, that's to me the question. If somebody is looking for a solution and you present it to them, yep. they're, you know, that works. Yep, so but, but to me, it's not just about putting a solution out there. How do you actually get them to look for it? Sure, so uh, there are a couple of things there. So the first is that there have been signs of demand for uh, college guidance platforms like ours. Um, so a, a competitor school, which doesn't touch the financial piece, was able to drive about a million downloads in less than six months when on a direct-to-consumer model. The problem with the direct-to-consumer model for something like this is this is more complicated than searching through a list of schools, which is why to start, we're going through an institutional model where we're pushing it to students through schools, where there's sort of a, an entrenched model therein uh, to have students go through this in a way that's facilitated, right? So rather than sort of, to your point, um, throwing it out there and asking students to pull it as a resource for them, even though they know they need it, they may not want to use it, we're going through the institutions where there's programming in place so that uh, we're using uh, time that's already there uh, to, to basically have students go through it because to your point, it could be painful if they do it by themselves. So I, I think um, overall your pitch was really well done. I mean, uh, we all heard the buzzer go off right as you were finishing and you covered, I think, really 95% of all the kind of things that we typically like someone to cover in terms of a two minute pitch when obviously you can't get into details of like the business model, right? And, and you, you threw some numbers out there to give us a sense of what the market size might be and the problem you're attacking, and why it matters, kind of your traction, who you sell to, the fact that you are, you had an ask at the end when we're raising $750,000. Uh, the one, you know, and again, this is nibbling around the edges, I think, just talking about the pitch and not the business itself, um, is I think a little bit about you would have been good, right? Because one of the questions, and Lister was gained to this a little bit, that we always have is, okay, well, why are you the relevant person to be attacking this problem, yep. right? Because at this stage of a company, especially, it's as much of a bet on, as on yep. a person as on the problem. So, minor thing, I think, <clears throat> and Lister, I, those of you who've been to these know we tend to come at these pitches from the opposite ends of the room, so that's probably, yeah. and then, you know, but when you look at 900 deals a year, you have to end up at four, and that's kind of how we end up there. Um, I agree, I think the one thing from a business perspective that, <clears throat> when I 
think of college students and high school students. Yep. That probably goes into the least likely to ever use financial planning software in the bucket uh, in my mind, right? I mean, uh, having been through both high school and college yep. and um, knowing that. So, so I, it will be interesting to, to understand how um, you are going to induce them to use the platform. I, I did like in your answer hearing about to be necessarily um, that colleges do have existing budgets for retention. Growing budgets. And they're growing, and, and we've heard from other companies that are um, attacking those budgets more from the tutoring and yeah. academic support side, but, but my, my wife's an educator who's taught at community college for 10 years, and she has told me exactly what you did, and the reality is it's the financial constraints and the constraints outside of school that are the number one thing that prevents people from completing programs. So I think it is interesting the direction you're approaching it from. Uh, but yeah, I think how you, uh, getting the dogs to eat the dog food more than once would be the interesting challenge. Thank you. A couple of other comments. First, I've heard some of your others. One suggestion in the two minute pitch, um, told a story about being on the bench. You made it an emotional, personal connection. I don't think I, it was better about what it, it is, what equity is, but yeah. I actually think it'd, it'd give you a uh, be better response for that emotional connection, right? He's gonna fail and he's piled up yeah. lots of student loans. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing. Um, I, first of all, I thought it was great. Uh, second. Um, team. You talked about yourself. Yep. You have a team together that will help. Yep. Obviously, you're connected, having worked in this space before. Yeah. So our team is. Uh, so my co-founders and I actually worked on the nonprofit college access organization together. So uh, subject matter expertise is something that we share across the board. Um, my other co-founders have background in big data analytics. So uh, one of my co-founders was the seventh employee at a company that recently got acquired that was doing sort of. Um, you know, managing a team to help Uber and Walmart and others use their big data to put together targeted marketing campaigns. Um, this company, at the end of the day, will be a data company, um, both with the types of data that we're able to rationalize and provide to students, but also how we're interpreting it on the back end and sort of packaging it, providing value to colleges by helping them preempt financial risk, uh, and also being able to identify sources of sort of trends toward uh, dropout, right? So, we're well positioned to do that. My other co-founder uh, is an award-winning product manager, so he's been recognized in New York City for uh, his civic tech work. Uh, in 2015, he built a platform that helps low-income communities uh, basically resolve issues with predatory landlords and won an award for that. He also has a background in EdTech and previously worked as a sales VP for a YC company. Um, we also have a developer on staff who's built both EdTech and FinTech platforms in the past, so understanding the nuances of both markets and what you need to do to, to be successful there. Uh, so we have a really good team and that we're well positioned to, to go out and win this market. So last thing, yep. it's maybe a suggestion is, you know, clearly there's something there. There is money that's available, right? I think we need to be able to connect that to the business model how your business model is gonna leverage that availability, at least maybe one more sentence or two that gives yeah. a tease in a couple of minutes that connects those. Thank you. And one last thing I would say, um, and it's kind of a little bit of an ex explanation or expansion of what I was trying to say earlier. You know, any, any two minute pitch, right, where, where you're meeting an investor or you're trying to convince somebody to come join your team or, or, or whatever you're trying to do in a couple of minutes with somebody, you, you, you need to be able to say one thing. It's not just about checking the boxes on all these things we're telling you, but you gotta be able to say one thing that will allow me to just turn around and look at you as I'm walking away. I say, wow, uh, this company is going to be special. This, this company is gonna be unique, or this company can be the number one player in this space. And sometimes that is how fast you're growing. Sometimes that's the uniqueness of your idea. There's gotta be something that you put there that you say, this is going to make that person who's walking away turn around and say, well, tell me about that again. Um, and, and just work on that. Because I think maybe that's one thing that I, you, you check on all the boxes, but I don't know that you had that, yeah, the, the thing that would make me say, 
I need to have a cup of coffee with this guy next time I next time I'm in town. So that that's the only Thanks. other piece of advice I would give. Maybe the audience has questions. If we got, have time, got under two minutes left. Or under three minutes. Yes, Al. Uh, I think you did a great job for two minutes. Very well done. Thank you. Uh, the very good news. We have college students in the audience. No. Oh. Students in Johnson and Wales, which is an expensive private school. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> So we're selling to the institutions. We don't want to charge students anything. Uh, we think that you guys should be paying for college, not for our products. Um, you know, one of the things we've been thinking about is, uh, to this gentleman's point, is uh, possibly selling it to parents. But uh, right now, it's only an institutional-based model. Any more? Yes. So I know that you're doing it for retention basis, but say if for students that are trending negatively, what would be the response that schools would do? Is it something where supporters are looking to, you know, cut their losses or, you know, kind of? No. So it's, it's really expensive, first of all, for a school to go out and recruit a new student. So they're going to do everything that they can. It's about $3,500 a student to go out and recruit, uh, in addition to the lost tuition revenue that's not coming in. Uh, a lot of schools are now implementing emergency aid programs uh, in the ideal form as a grant in more unfortunate circumstances, it can be a loan. But that, that disbursement process can take up to two weeks. So if you are a student that needs $50 now, that bureaucratic process isn't gonna work for you. You're gonna end up dropping out, right? So we can reduce the friction and uh, you know, making sure that that aid can be dispersed in timely fashion and that those small dollar amounts would not induce dropout. That there would be a means for a student to sort of get the funds that they need uh, and ultimately you know, continue. Thanks very much.